Hey guys, this is Shannon from Skip to My Life. If you have a small closet crammed with clothes but still feel like you have nothing to wear, this episode is for you. Let's get going. If you love to live an upscale lifestyle on a downsized budget, I am here for you at Skip to My Life. This is part one of a five-part spring cleaning challenge. I sure hope that you will join by downloading the spring cleaning checklist linked below. Oh my goodness, here is the before of my tiny, messy closet. My husband and I had merged our clothing together on this side and it just was not working for me. So I decided to move all his things onto the other side of the closet that you see to my right and my things will be completely on the left-sided closet. I also really wanted to brighten up this space. I just felt like it's a dark space and my storage containers were dark and everything just was demotivating as I got dressed in the morning. So as you see, my step one was to remove absolutely everything and wipe all those shelves down, evaluate my space, and then take the items that I don't wear very frequently and store them or decide those that I wanted to donate. Next, I'm going to take an inventory of my clothes using this capsule wardrobe checklist that I'm also linking for you down below. This has really helped me to streamline my clothing so that I know everything I have will look great together and will look great on me. I also evaluated for fit, any stained clothing, torn, anything that needed to be repaired or given away. Two clothing items I think look universally attractive, especially on women over 40, are a crossover top and a chambray shirt. These two items are so versatile and really look attractive on everyone. You can ask my family, I'm a little bit of a container collector slash hoarder. And so I went through my stash of containers. These are all from Dollar Tree and figured out which ones fit best in this top space. I love these containers because they are a bright white. And so I decided to transfer the items from those dark brown containers into these easy to keep clean and bright plastic bins. I was left with the corner space to the side of my dresser that I really wanted to make good use of and I decided to use it to hold scarves, belts, and purses. So I hung a wire rack with clear hooks and command adhesive and I used this little wire rack from Dollar Tree. It fit perfectly and did the exact job I needed it to. If you're enjoying this video, let me know by clicking the thumbs up like button. On the bottom section of my closet, I've already shown you this side holds my handbags, my scarves, and my hats. But this little bureau used to be a changing table for one of our kids. Since then, I have painted it with chalk paint and replaced the knobs to these little crystal knobs, and I really love it. It fit perfectly in this space, and yes, I did lose some closet space with it, but I'm able to fit all my undergarments, my socks, um, and then in this bottom drawer, I have leftover things like swimsuits, off-season clothing, pajamas, things like that. So this one unit is able to hold everything that would be a visual mess or something that becomes easily cluttered. And I know that I can just reach in there in the morning and I don't have to worry about it always looking neat and tidy. Hey guys, I'm outside my favorite thrift store today. I have gone through my closet. I have some items to donate and I also brought my capsule wardrobe checklist along with me. So I'm looking for a few items. I'm going to give you a couple tips before we go inside. The first is every experience is brand new. You're not, it's not like a department store where you're going to find the same merchandise if you go back. If you see something you really like, you need to snap it up because it's probably not going to be there the next time. Look for brands you you're familiar with. Most of us kind of know what our size is in certain brands. So if you have a brand that you're familiar with, it's easier to know, oh, this is my size. This is going to fit me pretty well. Let's go inside and see what we find. 
If you've never been thrift store shopping before, I'm gonna give you a few tips. First, ways to find the very best bargains in shoes. You wanna turn those shoes over and look at the bottom to look for signs of wear, tear, such as scuff marks and heels worn down versus a second pair of shoes where you can see that sole has never been worn whatsoever. So what a deal these were. When it comes to handbags, you want to take the straps and the edging and look for signs of wear and tear versus a bag that obviously has not been used or has been used just very, very gently. Now, when it comes to blouses and sweaters, look for snags and pilling. Those are items you absolutely don't want. Look for name brands you're familiar with, as well as clothes with the original tags on. And then, of course, you will find some hidden gems as well as some very quirky items. So it's all the, in the fun of the hunt. My first bargain is this dress by Time and True. Now, it looks like it's brand new. And it, I know that it retails at Walmart for $9.99. I got it for $5.79, and it had a red tag. So those are all half price. So I actually got this dress for about three bucks. So um, even though I could go to Walmart, this is still in season and purchase this, I've saved seven bucks on this item already. This next top still had the tag on and it retails for $66. I paid $5.99 for it. It's a really cute little off the shoulder eyelid top that I think will be great for summer. I saved the best for last. And I stumbled upon this little gem, which is not a clothing item, but it's a longa burger bag. My sister used to collect these years ago, so I knew when I saw it, it was valuable. I went ahead and looked it up on eBay, and I know that I can get at least $30 for it. So I will not only make my money back, but that one basket will pay for my whole little shopping trip to the thrift store. I found this hanging shelf organizer at Walmart. I believe it was $5 and I attached it to the rod at the top. Those shelves are quite sturdy, but I also added a piece of cedar wood that I had found when someone in my neighborhood was redoing their back fencing. That adds protection from moths as well as a bit more stability for those shelves. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. If you've never subscribed, I would love to have you join our group. It's completely free and we have so much fun here. It seems like everyone who does a closet organization system has a definite idea on what type of hanger you should use. And I'm gonna tell you my opinions and then let you decide what works best for you. There are two basic types of hangers on the market, the plastic tubular style and the wire velvet framed style. Notched edge is especially helpful if you have strappy items like this one to keep them from falling off the hanger. The smooth edge is better for long sleeve blouses and things like that that have a collar. My most favorite type of hanger is this velvet style hanger and I'll tell you why. There are three reasons that I prefer these over the plastic style. The first is because you don't have to worry about any fabric or style of clothing slipping off no matter how thin your straps are or how silky your fabric is. This velvety surface will keep them on that hanger and you never have to worry about them ending up in a puddle on the floor of your closet. The second reason I love these is because if you have a small closet like mine, these take up about half the space of the bulkier plastic hanger and you can really fit more clothes in neatly. And then the third reason I love these is because if you're trying to get all your blouses facing the same direction and you accidentally put them on the hanger the wrong way, on a tubular hanger you would have to take the whole thing off and reverse it. But on this type of hanger all you have to do is swivel that hook around and you're good to go. 
Well, now that I have my system in place, let me take you on a tour of my closet. The first thing I wanna show you is this little card that I got from a program called Dressing Your Truth. I'm gonna put a link to that below. I am not an affiliate and I don't represent them, but I just really found it helpful to streamline the colors that I look great in and feel confident in by using this little card and putting it close to my closet so I can reference it. So to start with, this this side of my closet is all top with long sleeves and black on the end and then the rainbow and then we end with the long sleeve whites now after I have the long sleeves I go to the shorter length sleeves with the rainbow system in place and then finally my shells are here the tops and bottoms are separated by this little organizer which holds my t-shirts my leggings and my shorts now these are my go-to's when i come home and i want to get comfy underneath those are my flip-flops my outdoor shoes and i keep those in this cute little bin underneath long pants skirts long sweaters and then finally dresses now i got this idea from katherine at do it on a dime i double up my dresses so that you'll see they hang on two hangers i have enough of these velvet hangers to use for my dresses and skirts i'm able to just stack those really neatly and easily back here in the top part of my closet are things that i don't use as often starting with thermal hats and gloves for cold weather travel pouches these are just cowboy hats my husband and i have a couple of those we don't wear those every day various baseball caps, shoe polish, insoles, and then I have some sample, I, sample size travel items on the end. Thanks so much for coming along in today's episode. As always, comment below and let me know your very favorite idea. If you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Don't miss out on any of the fun ideas coming your way. Until next time, this is Shannon from Skip to My Life. Make it a great day.